In this vast cosmos, humans are the only beings whose minds are constantly engaged in exploration. With this innate curiosity, humans have almost explored every planet in the solar system. However, not a single planet in the solar system has been found where our bodies can survive without a spacesuit. Each planet in the solar system has its own unique environment to the extent that humans have even sent spacecraft to the sun. But have you ever wondered what the world inside the sun is like? What is happening within the fiery sphere? What kind of system is in place that has kept the sun burning for billions of years? Let's embark on a journey to explore the world inside the sun today. And mind you, we won't be taking this journey with our hearts, but with scientific data. Welcome to your Cosmic Discovery YouTube channel. Let's continue our journey further. Between the planets in our solar system, the massive ball of fire, the sun, acts like the heart of the solar system. It provides light and heat to all the planets in the solar system. Its gravity holds everything in the solar system in place, from the largest planets to the smallest particles. The sun is so massive that it can fit about 1.3 million Earths inside it. Like the rest of the solar system, the sun also formed from a giant rotating cloud of dust and gas about 4.5 billion years ago. This cloud collapsed due to its overwhelming mass, with most of the material going to the center, leading to the formation of the sun. This entire event is known as nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium gas. This process covers 99.8% of the total mass of the entire solar system. It's an event known as nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms fuse to form helium gas, producing an immense amount of energy in the form of light and heat. This energy influences the environment of other planets, moons, asteroids, and comets, creating the entire solar system. The gravitational pull of the Sun is 28 times stronger than that of the Earth. If your weight on Earth is 60 kilograms, your weight on the Sun would be approximately 1680 kilograms. After descending to its surface, you would need to fly out at a speed of 648 kilometers per second. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to escape its atmosphere. An estimate of the Sun's gravitational pull can also be realized by considering that it forces Pluto, located about 6 billion kilometers away, to revolve around it. As we all know, the Sun is the closest star, making it the nearest celestial body. Scientists have been closely observing it for years and conducting various research to understand it better. Yet, there are still many aspects about the Sun that remain a mystery. One of the most significant questions is how such a giant star functions. Additionally, the deep inside of the Sun is another enigma scientists are trying to unravel. To explore the deep inside of the Sun is impossible as there hasn't been any technological development yet that allows such observations. However, astronomers can estimate what might be happening inside the Sun using applications of physics and computer modeling. Now. If you're also curious about what's inside the Sun, you should consider that it is divided into six layers. Each layer has different physical properties. So, let's explore these dynamic and complex regions today, so that we can understand what kind of things might be present inside the Sun. The heart of the Sun is its core, which is a nuclear reactor. When we talk about its size, it is thousands of times larger than Earth in our terms. This is the place where nuclear fusion occurs, where hydrogen atoms collide at certain pressure and temperature, leading to fusion and the creation of helium. The energy produced here powers the sun, and it is this energy that we feel every day in the form of heat and light. Now, if we discuss the temperature at the core of the sun, it reaches an astonishing 15 million degrees Celsius. And if you're still not amazed, let us tell you that due to solar fusion, the energy created in the Sun in just one second is more than that produced by 1.8 billion nuclear bombs. The next layer is the radiative zone, where energy in the form of photons and light units escapes from the superhot core. Although this layer is not as dense as the core, it is still dense enough for photons to bounce off and collide repeatedly with neighboring gas molecules. According to NASA, a single photon takes about 100,000 years to travel from the sun's core to its outer layer. 
Now, if we talk about the next layer, the convective zone, the temperature in the convective zone drops to as low as 2 million degrees Celsius. The density decreases to a point where photons begin to convert into heat, and the conversion process begins. Through convective currents, these heated photons start to move outward. These currents are rising columns of hot gas that create a rolling motion, similar to how boiling water generates rolling columns. Let's now talk about the layer that we can see from Earth, which is the lowest part of the Sun's atmosphere, called the photosphere. We want to inform you that the photosphere is often referred to as the surface of the Sun. Although it doesn't have a solid surface like rocky planets, this thick outer layer, about 300 miles or 482 kilometers thick, contains hot plasma. The majority of the Sun's energy, created in its core millions of years ago, finally reaches this place. About 8 minutes and 20 seconds later, it arrives at our location in the form of sunlight. We'd like to mention that the photosphere is much cooler than the interior areas of the Sun. However, the temperature at this location is still approximately 5,500 degrees Celsius. After the photosphere, there is the chromosphere, which is a layer about 1250 miles or 2,000 kilometers thick. Here, hot gases exist, resembling a burning forest. The loops of the burning plasma can extend for thousands of miles. It's worth mentioning that there is a mystery about the chromosphere. It is said that the further you go outward in this layer, the hotter it gets, unlike other layers where the further inward you go, the warmer you feel. Now, if we talk about the Sun's outermost layer, it is called the corona. Please don't confuse it with the coronavirus. This corona is a significant part of the solar atmosphere. It can extend for millions of miles, and we can observe it during solar eclipses or through special extra imaging. Like the chromosphere, the temperature of the corona is extremely high, reaching up to about 2 million degrees Celsius. However, the mystery remains about why there is so much heat in this region. It is suggested that the Sun's magnetic field plays a crucial role in this phenomenon. The Parker Solar Probe, a brave spacecraft sent by NASA to explore the Sun, is continuously moving closer to it. In the coming years, it may reveal important discoveries about the Sun. The Parker Solar Probe has approached the Sun more closely than any spacecraft before it. Alongside this, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, is preparing its space mission called Aditya L-1 to learn more about it. If we compare the Sun with the average stars present in the Milky Way galaxy, it appears quite ordinary. However, it has a unique feature, the fact that its heat and light reach a blue planet where inhabitants are continuously researching and will continue to do so. So, my friends, have you figured out who those inhabitants are? Yes, it is well known that all the planets, including the Earth, revolve around the Sun. But what does the Sun revolve around? However, the Sun itself is also moving. It revolves around the center of the galaxy. Just as Earth completes one orbit around the Sun in 365 days, which we call a year, the Sun, in turn, takes about 230 million years to complete one orbit around the center of the Milky Way. This period is referred to as a cosmic year. Despite its speed of approximately 828,000 kilometers per hour, the vastness of the Milky Way means that it takes the Sun a tremendous amount of time to complete this cosmic journey. The Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way at a distance of about 28,000 light years. Hence, despite its incredible speed, it takes around 230 million years for the Sun to make one full orbit around the galactic center. By the time you've watched this information, the Sun has already traveled a distance of about 20,000 kilometers. This cosmic perspective highlights the immense scales and time frames involved in the celestial motions within our galaxy. We trust that you've enjoyed learning so much about the Sun. If yes, please comment below and let us know your thoughts on this video. Additionally, to keep watching more consistently interesting videos, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We look forward to bringing you more engaging content. Thank you for your support.